individual trees, sucking the life out of them over decades. It plays a crucial role in the forest ecosystem, recycling nutrients back into the soil. And now, it's time for today's topic. Woman finds tiny house in the woods. Her mouth drops open at realizing what's in it. A woman was exploring the woods when she suddenly stumbled upon a tiny door at the bottom of a tree trunk. Now, if I were in her shoes, I would have been too curious just to ignore it. And so, she approached the tiny door and opened it. She was surprised and baffled by what she found. A door filled with coins and other shiny objects. Initially, I was not expecting that. That was actually the last thing I was expecting for her to come across. She thought that it was the home of a fairy or another supernatural creature. But as it turned out, it was something more grounded. The woman returned to the bizarre door and found it belonged to what looked like a ground squirrel. You see, these creatures are known not only for living in burrows, but also for collecting things. And this particular one had a penchant for shiny things. It seems like an innocent and normal behavior for an animal. However, this hoarding behavior might make people think a fairy is living in this door. As for how this tiny home came to be in the first place, well, we can only assume that a bored yet creative fella decided to construct this in the hollow trunk for fun. The tiny ground squirrel found it and decided to make it a home. So this dude is visiting the world's hottest place. Hello everyone, Ruhi Chenet here. We set out towards the hottest spot on the planet, the Love Desert, which is mostly inaccessible due to scorching temperatures beyond human endurance and the lack of resources like water. NASA's medium resolution imaging spectral array diameter installed on the Aqua satellite recorded that the world's hottest land surface was in the Love Desert, where temperatures reached 70.7 degrees Celsius or 159.3 degrees Fahrenheit in 2005. Located in the southeast of Iran, the distance from the northernmost tip to the southernmost tip of the Lut Desert is considered 480 kilometers, and its distance from the westernmost tip to the easternmost tip is considered. I never even heard of the Lut Desert. This is the first time I'm ever even hearing of it. Have y'all? Y'all familiar with it? Because I'm definitely not. 320 kilometers. This vast salt desert contains many mysterious spots, like Gondon Barian, the hottest point on the planet where 70.7 .7 degrees Celsius is measured from space. A vast plateau covered with dark volcanic rocks that are claimed to have no life on its surface. NASA has measured surface temperatures there for several years and has repeatedly seen record numbers. In this hell where the planet is cooked by the sun, we will shoot images that we have never seen before. Our first stop is Shahdat, the last town on our way, built in an away in the west of the desert. Here life is normal thanks to the high altitude. Now the temperature is about 37 degrees Celsius here. Now we have hundreds of kilometers to go and the temperatures will get even higher. Before entering the desert we see the hundreds of years old Shafi Abad caravansaray which is now in ruins. In desert while the weather is so hot we find some water and put our scarf or shema in the water. National air condition. How long y'all think that's gonna last? Them dipping that water in there? Probably what, about a minute, if that? <laughs> and I, I consider myself a person that can deal with the heat. I'd rather deal with the heat than the cold. Which one are you? I'd rather deal with the heat. Some people rather and prefer to deal with the cold. I think I, but even like this place, nah, that's that's different. That's that's different. And <laughs> put it on our head to reduce the temperature. So we need to record the track of going to the desert. There is a backup company which is following our GPS and our track and if something happened to us, they immediately come to us. The Lot Desert is also recognized as one of the driest regions in the world. It usually receives less than 30 millimeters of precipitation per year and this small amount of rainwater flows down the surrounding mountains for a short time and evaporates quickly. There are many salt lakes that have dried up in the scorching heat. Unfortunately, some migratory birds cannot find any shade they can take shelter in when they fly in this geography and they make a mistake. They come to these salt lakes and drink salty water without knowing and they pay for this mistake with their lives. This shows that nature has no joke and has no pity. I don't know what kind of bird this is. Beyond recognizable. Let's go. In order to move forward in the desert, we lower the pressure of the tires of the cars. They shouldn't work under rough terrain conditions. We're just at the beginning of the road. Let's measure the soil temperature here. 63.7 degrees Celsius, 146.6 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what will happen in a few hundred kilometers. You see now that the shadow is 45 degrees Celsius or 113 degrees Fahrenheit. We're still early in the day. 
I keep uh, the phone cooler like this, with this ice like this. If it is got hot, it doesn't work. After a difficult two hour journey into the heart of the desert, we finally approach the central point. This place has one of the lowest altitudes in the Lot Desert and is the second hottest spot. After this point, if you are going to stay outside for more than two minutes, no part of our body should be exposed, including our hands. The first thing we did as soon as we got out of the vehicle at around 12 o'clock was to measure the temperature of the ground. Our infrared thermometer showed 66.9 degrees Celsius, 66.3 degrees Celsius, 68.2 degrees Celsius. After only 2 minutes of laser thermometer measurement, the device gives an error due to high temperature. Our immersion thermometer on the other hand shows 69.6 degrees Celsius. Our guide worried that we might get stuck in the sand and quickly got out the vehicle. I'm gonna pass these dunes and then I pick you up there because the car should be lighter. As we move towards the center of the desert, the conditions are getting tougher. There are clouds out there which we have not seen anywhere before. We need to be very careful near the sand dunes because we got stuck immediately. We should be very careful and drive very good. It is very hard to breathe here. I am actually very thirsty. As you see the red line of the thermometer stuck to the top, it's not moving, can't measure. It shows that it exceeds 50 degrees Celsius or 122 degrees Fahrenheit. We also have a laser thermometer here. It no longer works at all, giving an error message. This is an immersion thermometer. There is a temperature of 52 degrees Celsius or 125.5 degrees Fahrenheit here. Our guide says we will go further, but even this geography does not allow us to breathe. <laughs> Why go further? This is extremely, extremely dangerous. Why are you going further? Like, I'm worried about the vehicle stalling out, the tires melting or exploding. You, you know what I mean? Heat exhaustion nonetheless. Uh, uh, I, something going wrong with your body. I, it's just so many different factors that could go wrong. I think you've got enough footage, bro. Y'all push this too far for the content, man. After opening the window, it is like, Hair dryer machine. It's really unbelievable. The floor is like a pan on a stove. The ambience is like an oven. We are pushing the boundaries here. I was thinking that I would be relaxed when I opened the window, but it is worse. It's like the hot air squeezing our throats. Air temperature and surface temperature are different concepts. While the surface temperature indicates the values for the sand absorbing the sun, the air temperature indicates the values in the air at least 1.5 meters above the sand. Usually the surface temperature is higher than the air temperature. Because of this fact, Hey, look, my shoe is melted. My feet feel like burning. We're not in the hottest place yet. Our friend's shoe just melted because of stepping on the ground. No. This layer has slipped. The ground is about 70 degrees Celsius or 158 degrees Fahrenheit. When we are not filming, we protect our cameras from high temperatures in the refrigerator where we store our water. Otherwise, they are constantly turning off. It's there. Our phones also became unusable from time to time. My phone doesn't work. Even though I constantly refill the 2 liter water bag I carry on my back all the time and drink water again and again, I can't stop my thirst. It is now 2.15 pm, we are walking towards endless desert, let's see how far we can walk. The near west of the desert is a low altitude region with an altitude of up to 150 meters and is exposed to the strong winds. Wind erosions form colored structures which are up to 150 meters high and can be seen in rows for tens of kilometers. The region is also home to your dams up to 75 meters high, parallel ridges and other geoclimatic formations. Although the wind is strong here, the sand is almost scorching. I have a hard time even standing up like this because the heat from the ground is burning my feet. Even though I'm wearing high heel sneakers, I can feel the warmth. Temperature measurements are made in shaded areas by weather stations. There's no working weather station here. We will also provide some shadow here. In the shade near Kalus, where there are fast blowing winds, we couldn't see the 52 degrees Celsius we saw under the sun one hour ago. You see that the temperature is now 47.3 degrees Celsius, 117 degrees Fahrenheit. 
but innocent winds can turn into sandstorms later in the day. Winds also make our lips chapped and increase our thirst. The sun rays reflected back from the sand make it difficult for us to see. That's worse. I feel like I'm blind. There's so much light. Glasses are a very serious need. It is really impossible to see around without them. It also protects against sandstorms from the sides. But this is not the hardest spot. We haven't reached the hardest point yet. I think the temperatures are 5 to 6 degrees Celsius higher there. After 50 degrees Celsius, it becomes more difficult to withstand with each increasing degree. It becomes impossible to hold metal objects and also some objects may melt. The effect of a temperature increase from 50 to 51 degrees Celsius is very different from 30 to 31 degrees Celsius. It pushes the limits of endurance. As the hours progress, the wind intensity increases. These are signs of a nighttime sandstorm. After I wonder what this can do to like your organs inside your body. Like what can that do? I know the body is not made to be able to withstand these type of temperatures. So what can start to ha what will start to happen to your body? And then what are the long term effects of something like that? I mean, he's in it. So he has my mind just racing. I'm looking at the desert and you just look at the orange color and just you could just feel the dryness and the heat radiating through the screen pretty much of what he's dealing with. Like he's really, really pushed when your shoes start to melt. Fam, that's a different type of heat. Your phone won't work like Yeah, that's different. Landscape darkens under the red clouds. A sound like the roar of the sea reaches everywhere. You lie on the ground, motionless, in despair. This could be a sandstorm. We can finally breathe a little in the coolness of the shade. Now we are going to get our food heated by the sand. The temperature of 70 degrees Celsius coming from the ground makes our meal ready. Let's reduce the temperature of your body. There you go. We are resting in the shade. It is around 3.30 p.m. It's like the sun is absorbing all of our energy. We are eating a local Iranian dish called Purma Sebzi. I'm stepping on a ground that perhaps humankind has never stepped on before. It's an interesting feeling. These depths of the desert are not visited much. We are near the Kalut. You are seeing the walls of the Kalut. It is quite hard and it's a big chunk. Now we are trying to return to camping site and we are very thirsty. The water is gone. The tracks started to disappear. I cannot remember where this place is. We've been walking for about three hours. The sun has come down quite a bit. The temperature began to lose its effect a little. I think it's around 45 degrees Celsius or 113 degrees Fahrenheit now. A desert is an endless road. Everywhere you look, there are thousands of roads covered with sand. But for those who do not know the direction, there is only one destiny. Here, some migratory birds enter the desert. They can't get out of the desert because of the intense heat. And by falling from the sky, they contribute to the ecological balance, which includes grasshoppers and desert foxes. <sighs> Finally, we return and set off on a quick quest northward to camp somewhere sheltered from the night storm. As the weather cools enough to take off our heads at 7.30 pm, the wind speed increases and we hope that a sandstorm will not occur. Luckily, we are safe in this higher location, enjoying the sunset before the big day tomorrow. I have prepared a light trap to show you that there is life in the Lot Desert. Let's see which animals will come. Information on biodiversity in this region is limited, but in addition to the barren vegetation in the north, many species can also be seen, including desert foxes, snakes, lizards, elderly spiders, moths, and red veined darters. However, it is specifically stated in many sources that no living creature lives in Gandombarian, the hottest region we will reach tomorrow at noon. This tree is the Nepka tree. As you can see, there is a lot of sand under it because there are many sandstorms here and the tree collects the sands at its root. They are kind of growing together. Small ones of Nepka trees, one of the few plant species that survive in the unfavorable location of the desert, are everywhere. The hills on which they stand will grow with them. We're gonna go here, volcanic mountain, volcanic area, and here is Gandalf area. This is a region where even those who go around with camels for years have barely survived. According to the written legends, towards the end of some journeys that took weeks, even the camels would crawl on their knees with trembling legs. The most realistic looking mirages always disorientated the adventurers. Have you ever come to the Andenbergen in summer? No, it is very dangerous to come here in this season. It's 8 years that I'm doing in Lut Desert, but this is the first time that I'm coming here in this season. The weather is so hot and very hard. 
Is there anyone who comes here? No, there is no people doing this. There are rumors that a caravan loaded with wheat had to leave its loads on the ground and when they returned a few days later with racist camels to pick up the loads, they found their wheat roasted. Gandom Baryan means roasted wheat in Persian. The surrounding sand dunes and mountains trap the hot air on the ground. Its low altitude reduces the chance of air rising and cooling. The dark color of the volcanic rocks on its surface almost soaks up the sun. On our way to Gandom Baryan, we found two abandoned motorcycle wheels. We have no idea what happened to the riders in this hell, where the nearest settlement is miles away. Some tourists come here in the cool months like December, January, February. But visiting the desert in June, July, August is regularly banned by the Iranian government. We cannot go any further. The stones are black and the temperature is so hot. We stop here. We stop here. No more further. Okay. It is dangerous to go further. So I require only two hours to film here because I need to investigate the stones. How long can we keep here? Actually, to be honest, uh, it is better to go uh, to live here as soon as possible. But if you want to do anything, it is not my responsibility. Just go, we go back there and we wait there for you. You go and do whatever you want and go back as soon as possible. It is dangerous to stay here more. You will go back now? Yeah, pretty much telling dude. If I can't get you that first time on that walkie-talkie film, I might try a second time. If I don't get no response, I'm gone. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. You, I, I, this, I'm not responsible. He giving him all disclaimers right now. You know what I mean? You see the, the National Geographic on the back window? I, I've never heard of this place, but it scares me. It definitely scares me. Who in their right mind would go out here and experience that? I'm all about a good adventure, but yeah, this is this is a different type of danger. You go back. It is very dangerous for the car to keep the car here. As you see, the stones are black and very heat, and it may flat the tires or also the damage the engine. Yeah. So we go back there, wait for you. Like only 200 meters? Maybe a little bit more, yeah. The temperature is so hot, and so I am trying to cool the radiator. We are here, exactly here, like 300 or 400 meter to Gandom Heryan. We are not allowed to go further with car. You can do this by walking. And this is this big hill is Gandom Baryan. You need to be careful. Take water with yourself and cover yourself completely because the weather is so dry. Even if you, your skin will be burned and you will be uh, heated and your body will be dehydrated and you will die. Okay? Just be careful and take lots of water with yourself. Take one radio. Just in emergency cases, we need to be with each other in touch. Be careful. Your shoes should be tight and uh, the heat maybe uh, burn your shoes as well. Okay? Take this. Uh just please go back as soon as possible as soon as did your job go back okay and always should be in touch with radio yeah, just sure. one group yes take the radio with yourself and be careful okay mm -hmm. to be without any i don't know if it is not reality it is the reality it is dangerous the reality is dangerous go and go back soon and the time is the maximum temperature it's 12 until when you go back one hour later so one is the hottest Time. Maybe two hours later then. Thank Goodbye. you. After this point, no part of my body should be exposed anymore. Meanwhile, since its initial analysis, NASA has recently released a new version of its satellite software, leading to the speculation that land surface temperatures in the Lot Desert could be even higher now. As researchers from the Bulletin of the American Meteorological Society, an academic journal pointed out in their publication in May 2021, it is thought that temperatures in Lot Desert could actually reach as high as 80.8 degrees Celsius or 170. 7.4 degrees Fahrenheit. We left the meat on the console of the car and set off. Our time and resources are limited, so we have to be fast and organized. Guys, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I am going to give a report in every 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes, okay. There is no shadow anywhere. Everywhere is covered with large and small stones and basaltic rocks. These stones are so hot that no hand can resist holding them. Oh, it looks like hell. A huge area, more like the surface of Mars than Earth, greeted us. We feel like we have stepped on another planet. We came to the hottest spot on our planet. I can't believe it. I don't know how long we can last here. It's very hot everywhere. I fam, fam, fam. Stepping on those, those rocks he stepped on. 
That's probably like stepping on hot coal. Like he's probably grilling himself right now. <laughs> he probably smells his feet burning. Feel the heat under my feet. There's no place where I can take a step that's not black. And the black stones are literally burning now. You see the mountains? These mountains actually go further. Look, the place over there looks like it's on fire. I don't know if you see the heat rising from the ground. Since it's surrounded by mountains, mountains trap the hot air down here and the hot air cannot get out. The color of the rocks and the basalt structure naturally absorbs the sun's heat more. The place is like hell. Now let's take a walk and measure the temperature. The high temperature of the dry surface absorbs all the endurance and strength of a person as he or she takes a step. Even plants like cactus don't grow here at all. It is stated in many sources that no living thing can live on this place. It is estimated that these basalt remnants were formed as a result of magnetic activity that took place about 2 million years ago. And pores were formed in the stones as a result of gas release in the lava. We are about to unofficially measure one of the highest temperatures ever measured on earth. Leaving a person alone here means his or her death. If our friends leave us, there is no way we can get out of here. We are in a place that is completely contrary to human nature. There are many articles that say that no creature lives in Gondombaria. We are in the hottest place on earth right now during the hottest period of the season and the hottest hour of the day. I have to utilize my water very carefully. Now I will measure the temperature at a height of one meter from the ground and this measurement has to be done in the shade. That's why we carry an umbrella with us. This is not for ourselves. There is wind here, but just because it's windy doesn't mean it's cool at all since the wind blows like fire. I can feel the scorching heat all over my body right now. My hand is burning. The camera is black, you know. Every metal place we touch is like it's on fire. There is a reason this umbrella isn't black. I want this measurement to be fair. My feet are like on fire, really. When you stand in a place and wait a little, the feeling of warmth increases. First, let's measure the temperature on the ground. It gives an error. Yes, it can measure the temperature, but it cannot be under the heat. We're going to keep the thermometer next to cold water, cool it down a bit and try again. I try to provide the shade for about a minute to make a fair measure. I can't even speak. This isn't working anyway. It doesn't show anything. It says iPhone needs to cool down before you can use it. Now we are going to measure the temperature under the sun. Because we don't have any shade here, that's the temperature we feel nowhere to hide. The sun mercilessly sears where it beams. I have trouble speaking and I have a terrible headache here. It shows the air temperature 54.1 degrees Celsius or 129.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's measure the surface temperature with this. Guys, it is 30 minutes in. We are fine. Roger that. Is everything okay there? Everything is okay here, but the temperature it's still getting high and high. I can feel the intensity of the sun above me in all its fury. I can feel my heart rate increasing. I'm shaking. After spending an hour, our bodies began to tremble. I'm tired. I have no more energy. I have to pause a lot. Water, water break. The camera got so hot that I can't hold it for three seconds without gloves. Everything metal is scorching right now. Did you take your gloves off? My hand is shaking, but the place where I touched camera are red and hurting. Nah, fam, they need to leave. They gotta get out of there, bro. They're slowly, de uh, slowly deteriorating. Like, look at him. You can see the, his face. He looks like he's like like a rag wrung out. <laughs> you know how a person would start to look wrinkly, how a rag would look wrinkly, no water or, or hydration whatsoever, no moisture in their body, nothing. Like, er all of these signs, Fam, they need to get somewhere and get hydrated quick. This ain't good, man. So bright without glasses. I can never walk like this. I am going to try something different now. Error, it says error. When I put it inside, it says error. Oh my God. Oof. I have to put on my gloves. It's working, come here. 68.6 .6 degrees Celsius, 69.2 degrees Celsius. We're getting pretty close to what NASA had measured. Is this a sandstorm? There are very frequent storms here. Guys, here, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, you're fine, no problem. 
There was a sandstorm just around here. We were filming it. I couldn't reply to you. Remember that you are the only person who gets there in this season, in this time, in this place. Now let's take a look at the temperature of this. It doesn't work. This is also broken. Yes, this tip can withstand the heat, but this part where the mechanism is located was also on the ground. I guess it is broken because of the heat. Not durable. Gone. Laser thermometer gives an error, doesn't work. The liquid from the mercury thermometer stuck to the top. The immersion thermometer is also broken. Shall we walk? I'm scorching. Haven't your feet got burned? Yes, they have. Considering that a cup of tea or coffee is served at around 70 degrees Celsius or 160 degrees Fahrenheit, it is not difficult to guess what the result of stepping on the ground barefoot will be. On 23rd of June... Now, for the skeptics out there, to which I, I won't... I won't say I wasn't thinking the same thing as well. Only thing I would question is like, there's no sweat on his body. No sweat whatsoever through his shirt, through his armpits, nothing I'm seeing, you know what I mean? So people will be like, is he really at that spot or are they doing this just for content? I don't know. But at the same time, you could also get to a point to where your body is too hot to even produce sweat glands. It's dried up, there is no sweat to come out of your body. So that's another alternative you could possibly think about. I don't know difficult to guess what the result of stepping on the ground barefoot will be. On 23rd of June, we measured the surface temperature of 69.2 degrees Celsius or 156.5 degrees Fahrenheit, the air temperature of 48.5 degrees Celsius or 119.3 degrees Fahrenheit, and under the sun, the air temperature of 54.1 degrees Celsius or 129.3 degrees Fahrenheit. I left the phone on the ground, if you remember. When I picked it up from the ground, I saw that the cheap plastic on its edges was burned but the middle bottom is fine when I put it on the ground the bottom side stayed up a little bit the edges touched to the stone you see this side is burned too we encounter something we never expected to see the claim that there are no living things here does not reflect the truth I've experienced it here for the first time it's June and it's around 2 p.m. and you see a subspecies of Eremiphila it is also known as the praying mantis among the people also I keep forgetting it how is the meat I put slice of meat there the front is kind of cooked, the back seems better. So hot, it's like I'm taking it out of the pan. It also smells like it's cooked. The middle needs to stay a little longer. This is how much it can get cooked in two hours. This is a surprise for you? Yes, I'm surprised. So we are debunking a myth then. Animals actually do live in Gandomberia. Our desert expedition shows that melting car videos circulating on the internet during summer are also fictional. Even here, car parts cannot melt in a day, they may melt only in a week. So the first minute, because the wheel is so hot as you see, my hand is burned. I brought some gloves here to touch the steering wheel for first five minutes. We will go out of here as soon as...